If you are someone that feels like you're constantly trying to catch up, you're always running, you're always chasing, you're always grabbing, yet never grasping, this series is for you. What is up, friends? It's literally been a minute. (laughs) Uh, There's a lot that's been happening in my life, a lot of changes, which I will update you on as we go through this video. But first, if this is the first video you've watched of mine, or it's been a while, which it's obviously been a while because I haven't made a YouTube video in a while. Let me reintroduce myself. So my name's Hannah. I'm a holistic coach and mentor, founder of Well, Empower, Grow, Thrive. Specifically on this channel, we focus on somatics, meditation, and cycles. Of course, this series is kicking off the beginning of the ladder of the cycles portion of the heart of my business. We are very cyclical beings, just like we have four seasons, fall, winter, spring, summer. We also have four phases of our menstrual cycle and the moon also goes through four phases. I personally do not see that as a simple coincidence, just saying. So a big part of my virtual one-on-one coaching and a big part of my in-person business aspect in South Jersey is talking about the lunar cycles and how we can learn to live more in sync with these lunar cycles, with the energy of the moon. We are what, like 70 to 80% water and the moon affects the tides. So to think that the moon doesn't affect the tides within us, the water within us is a little bit crazy to me. This is something that is generally new in our generation. Generations ago, we lived more in flow of our cycle. We took the time to slow down. In tribe, women would go to the red tent, right? They would go to a tent and menstruate together and and have nothing else on their plate. The other women in the tribe that were not menstruating would take care of the children, would take care of the meals, would do the gathering. So these women who were menstruating could physically slow down and physically be with themselves. And what would happen is they would have these beautiful moments of insight and beautiful intuition conversations with them within themselves that then after their menstruation they could go out and share with the rest of the tribe. Our DNA takes a lot longer to catch up than what this technology advanced world has created. I have some really fun guests lined up for this month. It's going to be a four week series like we normally do. We're just diving way back into it. But before we get into the following month's details, I want to give you a little life update and then we're going to dive into breaking down the introduction to living in cycle, living in sync with our cycle. And I'm going to approach that from a lunar standpoint as well as our menstrual cycle standpoint. And let me also preface this, that if you are not someone that has a menstrual cycle, either you are a male, so you've never had a menstrual cycle, or you just don't currently have a cycle as a female, whether you're on birth control or you're you've already hit menopause, this video is still very much for you because these energies still cycle. We don't have to be physically bleeding every month. So I think the last video I made was in the new year in January. And in January, I was still living in Northern Jersey. I had not moved yet since I have moved to Southern Jersey absolutely loving it. I'm down by the shore. I get to go to the beach as often as I want. I get to go hiking and all of the hiking trails be surrounded in the trees. Whew, making that transfer from city life to country life is something that I very much needed and was craving right before I left Uh, the city. There's such a beautiful spiritual community down here. But I missed you all so much. I really missed creating these videos, putting out this content, connecting with other professionals in their field that can share their knowledge with us on this channel. That's really the heart of my channel is to build community, to build tribe, to share our ideas and our businesses so that we can grow, we can empower each other, and we can thrive together. So let's talk cycles. This is something that is one of the pillars of my business, 
especially shows up in my one-to-one coaching. And the reason behind that is this. We live in such a masculine dominated energy, not necessarily like male, female, right? Like there's masculine and feminine energy in all of us. And the masculine energy is very controlling, is very all about the doing. It's pretty rigid. It's pretty controlled. It's structured. And that is good. We need masculine energy. So this is not shitting on masculine versus feminine energy. However, we want these masculine and feminine energies to be balanced. I actually created a video when we went through a series of this masculine feminine energy. So I'll link it right here if you want a little bit of a better idea of what I'm talking about, if this is very new for you. So because we live in such a masculine dominated world, we are always expected to be doing, to be creating, to be producing. However, just like the moon is never always full in the sky, just like we are not never always ovulating the entire month, We cannot be expected, we shouldn't be expected to always be in this masculine dominated era where we're constantly producing. It's this hustle culture that we're all very aware of by now. So we acknowledge that this hustle culture, we acknowledge that we're living in this very masculine dominated world, but how do we start making those shifts from masculine to feminine or more balanced? masculine feminine the feminine energy is all about creativity flow strengthening the intuition the masculine energy creates a container for the feminine energy to be in we need the masculine but we also need the feminine of just being of resting of listening to our bodies the best way that we can create this balance because we don't want to be too feminine we don't want to be too flowy and and always just being and never doing right the best way to create this balance is to recognize the pattern of cycles in our lives and we can recognize the pattern of cycles with a the moon and B, our menstrual cycle. Now for the sake of this video, to keep it concise and to the point, I'm going to kind of interweave the two, but please keep in mind that if your menstrual cycle doesn't line up exactly with this lunar cycle that I'm also incorporating, that's okay. We're gonna be talking about this more in the coming weeks, and I think that you'll find some really beautiful tidbits of information coming up. So let's start with the follicular phase. The follicular phase is after we've menstruated. The follicular phase is very much associated with an inner spring, kind of what we just went through. We're, we're just on the cusp of entering our, our summer season. Um, the follicular phase is kind of like the season that we just went through physically in the world if you live in North America. The follicular phase is very much a building of energy. In the sky, lunarly, the follicular phase is right after the new moon. It's called the waxing moon. So the moon is growing in brightness. Every day we see a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more of the moon illuminated until eventually we get to the full moon, which is what we'll talk about next. It's a really beautiful time to start making plans, to start dreaming up um, how to accomplish these goals that we may be setting for ourselves, how to make that change in our lives, how to accomplish something. It's really important here in the follicular phase to remember that we're just coming out of hibernation, if you will. So to dive right in head first, whoa, we are not gonna keep that energy going. It's not gonna be sustainable to bring us all the way to our ovulation, which is the highest peak of our energy. So the follicular phase is very much this like thawing out, this slow thawing out, coming back into the world. As the moon continues to grow in the sky, our energy continues to rise and to build until we make it to the full moon, which is the culmination of energy. It's the peak. It's like the top of the inhale right before we exhale. Everything is up here. That is typically when we hit our ovulation phase, which is when all of our hormones are the highest. That is when there's a lot of that 
fun sexual energy. A big opportunity here to play with pleasure. It doesn't just have to be sexual pleasure. How can you bring more joy and pleasure into your life? This is also a very social time. Ovulation, the full moon, is also associated with the summer season. So think about that. Like we wanna go out, we wanna socialize, we wanna be with our friends, we wanna be outside, we wanna be doing. The summer is very much that fire season, it's very much that masculine energy of doing, of accomplishing. And take note that our ovulation period is not that long. We try to carry this ovulation period into every single phase of doing, the energy of the ovulation period, of doing, of accomplishing, of always moving. The ovulation period is beautiful, but all of the phases of our cycle can be beautiful. They bring such a unique invitation into every single phase. So we move from our full moon. This is where in the sky, the moon starts getting smaller and smaller and smaller. It gets darker and darker, darker. We have a little less of the moon every single night. And this is called the waning moon. This is also our luteal phase. I always think of it as like a gentle decline. This is the phase that is eventually preparing us for menstruation, for that deep release for that hibernation. So the luteal phase, we may start with higher energy and then eventually we're gonna get down to lower energy, wanting to be more, turn more inward, wanting to be alone maybe a little bit more. The luteal phase is really one of the most difficult phases for me. Everyone is gonna struggle, not struggle, everyone is going to have a reaction to each of the phases differently if you're someone that tends to be maybe a little bit more outgoing tends to maybe have a little bit more of that masculine energy we're covering into the balance of feminine and masculine energy you may be someone that has a little bit of aversion or tension in the luteal phase because your body the energy of the world the universe the moon cycle and your body is calling for a slowdown. And for me personally, that's difficult. That has been difficult. And it's something that I am constantly inviting myself to settle into with multiple different tools that we can talk about in the weeks to come as well. So the luteal phase is fall. It's our inner fall. It's that not quite hibernating yet, not quite in that winter stage, but we're getting there. At the luteal phase is a beautiful time to tie up loose ends, to prepare for hibernation. So cook some yummy meals and put them in the fridge so you don't have to cook while you're bleeding. Um, begin to prepare to take that introspective moment when we get to the menstrual phase. The luteal phase also carries innately the energy of the wild woman. There's a lot of a lot that comes up in the luteal phase and I cannot wait to dive more into that with our guests and you in the coming weeks because oh there's so much to talk about here but we're getting a brief introduction. <laughs> so finally we have arrived at our bleed, at our menstrual phase. This is the inner winter. This is where in the sky lunarly we hit the new moon, so we don't actually see the moon in the sky. Of course it's always there, but the sun is not illuminating it. The menstrual phase is probably one of my favorite to rest in, to reside in, because the menstrual phase is all about being, it's all about resting, it's all about being here now, listening very in tune with our bodies. It's a time of really heightened intuition. As we build the ability to communicate, to hear what our body has to say, our menstrual phase is so powerful. This is generally a time where we have lower energy. This is generally a time where we feel exhausted, yet we push through. I remember a year ago, I think I shared this in this video when I talk about cycle syncing with working out and movement, but I remember I would be going to the gym seven days a week, six days a week, and all through my menstrual cycle. I would still be going to the gym with no acknowledgement of this powerful time. So I share this with you as a reminder 
that this is a journey. Life, this life is a journey. We're never going to arrive at this place where we like, yep, I got it all figured out. I got it down pat. I'm always great. Like this is always a journey. So if you're listening to this and you're like, oh my God, I don't feel any of this. I'm so detached from my body. You are exactly the person that needs to be listening to this. Not from a place of judgment, not from a place of shame and guilt or trying to impose all of these ideas. These are simply gentle invitations to start this communication in our body, to start this relationship with the moon, with our inner world, with our inner cycle. You are not behind. You are not lost. You're right here and you're right here for a reason. So... Thank you for watching this and take a minute to thank yourself for taking the time to listen to these invitations and then you're going to do with them what you will and that will be the right choice for you right now where you are. So this month we are going to be diving in with special guests that are experts in their field, diving into each phase. What is the energy of this phase? What is the universe calling for and inviting us to when we're sitting in a new moon or a full moon or menstruating or ovulating or in our luteal or follicular phase. We're going to talk about all four phases, all four seasons and how we can really harness this energy, harness these invitations that we're given every single month for our highest good. To move from that place of surviving, of trying to catch up. If you are someone that feels like you're constantly trying to catch up, you're always running, you're always chasing, you're always grabbing, yet never grasping, this series is for you. We're diving into this impeccable paradox of when we slow down, we're afraid that we'll run out of time. We're we're afraid that we won't accomplish and we won't be able to get everything done. Yet the paradox is that when we finally surrender to that slowdown, we gain so much more time, so much more energy, so much more ease and flow. We're truly living in flow of our cycle. There's a reason that we feel very overwhelmed right now in this world. There's a reason that we are feeling this call to slow down. This call of like, okay, I'm completely overwhelmed. Something needs to change, right? Something globally needs to change in this world. This is one invitation. I am so excited to take this journey with you. Please feel free to reach out with any questions. If you have specific questions that you'd like answered within this series, list them down below, DM me, make a comment, whatever feels right for you so we can answer your specific questions. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell button so you know when the next video is released so you don't miss one second of this juicy, juicy information. It has been so beautiful to spend time with you today. I am so looking forward to the rest of our time together this month and all that is to come. I will see you next time, friends. Be well.